It is Monday night in the Western Pacific and we have twin tropical systems out here towards the west now nearing Vietnam. Uh, this is Tonyo, but now internationally known as a Tao. I will talk about this in the second half of the update. Meanwhile, towards the east, we have our latest named tropical storm from the Japan Meteorological Agency. This is Vamco, known in the Philippines as Ulysses. I know it gets a little confusing with the names it's because Philippines puts out their different separate names. They're the only country in the world to do that, but that's how they know them here. Let's take a look at this system, though, a little bit closer because it is continuing to strengthen, and I do expect in just over 48 hours we're going to have a landfalling tropical system here in central and southern Luzon. So I'm going to break down the forecast here and then we'll discuss why that is, why this is intensifying. So just stick with me here on this video. Here's your winds right now, 64 gusting 109 kilometers per hour pressure at 1,002 hectopascals. It's moving towards the west northwest at 15 kilometers per hour. That seems slow. It's actually a pretty decent pace for a tropical system. So this will be on top of you before you know it. It is intensifying as it moves towards the northwest here. Very warm sea surface temperatures. The Philippine Sea effect, my friends, is a real thing. If you're new to the, watching these videos, I discuss that a lot. Anytime we get a system in here, sea surface temperatures are rather warm. And there's a lot of other factors. Like I said, I'll talk about that in a second, but let's mention where this is going. Central, southern Luzon, actually right front quadrant, likely going to be around Kasiguran. The good news in here, a lot of mountains. So once it moves over those mountains, Manila, yeah, it's going to move right over the NCR, but hopefully those mountains tear it apart a little bit. Despite that, if this track stays true, it is going to be a messy day. Keep in mind the cone of air, though. There, it, This is confident, but it could shift just a little bit. We saw that with Coney, known as Roly in the Philippines. It's not like the forecast is wrong. It's just sometimes it's not dead on right off the bat. If it was, my goodness, I'd be getting paid a lot more than I do in my actual meteorology jobs because uh, it, this is why it's called a forecast, not a crystal ball. Winds at landfall though, JTWC is holding no punches here. 110 knots gusting to 135 knots. They are expecting gust upwards of super typhoon strength. It won't be a super typhoon because sustained conditions won't be there, but it does show you that they're not holding no punches because like I said, time and time again, we have been bit by these systems. Here's actually a new product and thank you very, very much Lex at Western Pacific Weather for putting this together probability of at least tropical storm strength winds, at least, over the course of the next 48 hours here. And uh, yeah, so you have some of these areas that are pretty much 80-90% chance. Uh, Central and Southern Luzon, you're going to get at least tropical storm strength conditions. But notice that you still even have that chance, 20-30% chance, up here in the northern areas of Luzon, thanks to those gradient-induced winds off towards the north. So a lot of people are at least going to see tropical storm strength winds. But gust to super typhoon strength is possible here with this possible damaging typhoon, especially on the east coast of central Luzon. The tracks pulls through central Luzon. And by the way, this is a seventh named storm system in just under two months here for the Philippines. Why do I mention that? <clears throat> two reasons, two primary reasons. Uh, three, I should say. One, uh, the ground is saturated, so flooding is going to be possible because the ground can't soak it up. Two, people are still recovering from the previous storms, especially Goni, known as Roli in the Philippines. Uh, there's a lot of homes just don't have roofing. They just, their infrastructure is damaged. Uh, third, typhoon fatigue. I joke about it, but it is a real thing. And when you get hit by several storm systems, the latest storm, you think, you know what, I've been through it. I'm not worried. I see it in my comment section. I guarantee if you scroll down, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you will find at least one comment section that says, we are in the Philippines, we are used to this. Uh, that's great and all, but sometimes that bites people, sometimes that gets people in trouble because they, uh, they just don't take this seriously, especially with a rapidly intensifying storm system. Uh, let's take a look at infrared satellite imagery here, continuing to wrap up though. Uh, here's the thing, there was some dry air off towards the north. This is combating that uh, for several reasons. One, you have that inflow, but also you have the outflow loft. I talked about this in my video yesterday. Look at these wind barbs pushing down towards the south. This is in the upper levels. Tropical systems, air comes in at the lower levels, goes up like a chimney, spreads out aloft. So we have that. This indicates to me this has lungs to breathe. It's a well-ventilated machine here, plus vertical wind shear. 
Tropical systems like 10 knots or lower vertical wind shear. Look at this out ahead of it, five to 10 knots. And it's, it's, it's almost like it's just like a gateway. Moses spreading the seas here, wind shear, because this is not good news for us. Uh, this is just going to be moving out into that, and you have shear towards the east, you have shear towards the west, but nothing out ahead of this. That is going to allow for the system to become more symmetrical and intensify. On top of that, sea surface temperatures. That, of course, everybody knows this one. Uh, uh, 30, 31 degrees, it is just going to be allowing for the storm system to strengthen, intensify, and that is why I do anticipate at least a strong typhoon uh, up to landfall. So let's talk about this with a model forecast as well. I've given you all these variables because a lot of people, especially um, keyboard forecasters, people who don't actually uh, haven't studied meteorology, just look at this model guidance. They don't actually look at what's going on. Why are these storm systems intensifying? So hopefully I help you guys out here as to why I expect this to strengthen. Let's talk about the models now. This kind of verifies it. Here's our area here on Monday night. We still are already seeing some showers out ahead of it. That's what's being indicated here in the blue. But let's scroll this ahead. So let's go ahead basically uh, through Monday night, heading into Wednesday. Here's Tuesday, getting closer to Wednesday evening. Cassie Guran right here, Manila right there. You got a party off towards the north, that right front quadrant. Now notice though that sharp turn in the winds. Let's let it loop back here. You'll see a sharp turn in the winds right here. And you're like, what's going on there? That is the Sierra Madre Mountains. Here it is. That is fantastic news. Um, bad news if you're right there, but fantastic news for these heavily populated areas further west because that's going to disrupt the storm a little bit. I don't think not enough to um, reduce damage here, but that, that's better than further down towards the south. The bad news is when it does this, it squeezes out moisture. So the winds may not be worse further inland, but the rain is going to fall and it will fall in droves. Uh, well over 500 millimeters locally could be seen across some of these areas. Here's a closer view here heading into Thursday morning. This would be not good news, by the way, for Thursday morning. Uh, Manila, yeah, look at this. Uh, this is what I'm talking about with Coney. The mountains kind of disrupted it. This is actually picking up uh, just north of Manila, closer to Angeles, lighter winds, right? Mm. Uh, th that could take place, but it's really all thanks to these mountains just on the eastern periphery. This is still going to be some gusty conditions out here, but the worst of it, of course, east of those higher areas of terrain. Uh, here's another thing. It's not just the model guidance. Multiple track consensus from JMA, Pegasa, uh, KMA, JTWC, and Hong Kong. This is another great graphic from Lex there at Western Pacific Weather. Do check out that Facebook page if you haven't. Uh, yeah, so there is multiple agencies. These are real people making this, and they all kind of confirm that this is going to be kind of going into a central Luzon just north of Manila. Um, yeah, uh, Aurora, Quezon. That's where that landfall is looking more and more likely here by Wednesday evening. Be sure to check in with Pegasa for your latest forecast and updates. Um, I can't recommend that enough. Let's talk about another system. Uh, this is a Tau known as Tonio in the Philippines, but in Vietnam it is the Tau because unlike the Philippines, they do use the name that everybody else uses. Uh, it is making landfall here over the course of the next 12 hours. In fact, I uh, already see kind of this big rain band slapping around this. That is what's going to be bringing in some heavy rain showers from Da Nang a little bit further down here towards the south. There's a look at that track. Staying a tropical storm with the landfall, but the big issue is that it's the rain with this one, guys. So just take a look at this right here. This is what I meant with that, that moisture wrapping around here. Hits those mountains like you see with the Sierra Madre Mountains in the Philippines. Here in Vietnam, you have this coastal range that just piles up that moisture and it adds up to three to four to 500 millimeters at times. Um, I think this, this raid in here, especially just raid right west of Da Nang, could get upwards about 500 millimeters thanks to that persistent onshore flow combined with the northeast monsoon so i really feel for you guys here um i i'm sorry i'm not talking too much about this i noticed my viewership's a lot higher over towards the philippines but i know there are some of you that uh do find that useful and do want to know what's going on with this tropical system uh that's all for today though this is a long one so hopefully you stuck around with me i'm trying to put as much useful information in the correct order because i notice people click off about two to three minutes in if you're still watching now by the way 
please let me know because um, I appreciate it when you watch all the way through. I always get asked questions from people. Uh, I guarantee, this is another thing, if you scroll down, you're gonna see in the comment section, will it become a typhoon prior to landfall? At least one person will ask it because people don't actually watch the video, they just click there. Um, I try to answer all the questions as possible, but it, it does get a little bit aggravating sometimes, guys. Uh, please uh, follow me on all these social media platforms and please subscribe here on YouTube as well. Stay safe out there. As always, thanks for watching.